Hi everyone, I'm Fenella and welcome to my corner of the internet. Today I am going to be talking about my journey with health over the last year. I want to talk about this now because I have a lot of videos scheduled to go up that didn't go up when I wanted them to due to health problems. So they're going to go up in an odd order. You probably won't notice, but in case you do, this video will help explain it. So over the last year of my life, I have had a bunch of different health problems. I've had problems with my heart, with my breast, with my cervix, and with my mind. It roughly all started towards the end of last year. I was spending far too much time on my phone and I developed a type of motion sickness that is caused by your phone. It actually took me six months to realize that my phone was the cause. So for that first six months, it was very scary. I honestly thought I was going to die. I thought, is there something wrong with my brain? The doctors weren't able to explain at all or give me any answers. It wasn't until my dad actually found some information online about something called cyber motion sickness. What I was experiencing was severe vertigo. So if you've never experienced vertigo before, I feel like a good way to explain it would be, it's not very easy to describe vertigo, but some examples, I guess, is that feeling you get when you're in a lift and it goes up and you get that sensation in your body when you've run around in circles too long and you suddenly stop. Or when you're trying to walk on a boat that is in a very, very choppy ocean. It was basically feeling motion, but that motion didn't exist. The motion was coming from my phone, but even if I wasn't on my phone, and it usually was when I wasn't on my phone, it was like the motion that was happening on my phone from the scrolling was causing some kind of confusion in my reality when I put down the phone. So the difficulty appeared when I would try and walk, when I would try and stand still. My head was feeling and almost seeing motion that wasn't actually happening. It was very frightening. When this first started, I was living in Portugal. I'd just got an apartment there by the beach, very exciting. And I was at a point after moving into this new apartment where I had a lot of work to catch up on. So I needed to spend a lot of time on my phone and on my iPad. This involved a lot of scrolling, a lot of fast swiping and movement on the screens and a lot of hours, probably around 14 every day. And I remember walking with my friend um, along the beach there was a market, we're walking through the market and I just don't feel okay. Something is wrong. I remember feeling like the way I was walking just didn't feel normal. I remember just every step felt different, but I didn't know how to describe it. I just knew that I was not okay and I needed to go home. My friend was so supportive during this. She was amazing and she looked after me a lot. She walked back with me to the apartment and I pretty much stayed in bed then for maybe a week because the vertigo just got worse and worse. And looking back that day when I wasn't feeling well, I went to bed and I got out my phone and I lay in bed and I scrolled. And then the next day I did the same and the next day I did the same. So that day where the vertigo was there, but it wasn't crippling is when I should have put my phone away, but I didn't. That is when I should have <laughs> taken a day off my phone and tried to recalibrate things by going for a walk, by writing in a notebook by doing some yoga, not by going home and scrolling on my phone. So the vertigo got so bad, I needed help from doctors. I was scared, I didn't understand what was going on. They thought it was all kinds of things. And also there was a huge translation issue. At first, the local hospital were treating me like I had COVID and they were actually shouting at me because they couldn't understand what I was saying. I couldn't understand what they were saying. And I just remember being made to go into a room with full of people that had COVID and were actually on ventilators. I went into this corner of that room where there was plastic sheeting all around me and people came in in the full gear and treated me like I had this infection. I didn't and it was really scary. When they finally found someone that spoke English, she came and had a chat with me, I burst out crying. They put me in a wheelchair um, and then they left me in the hallway for a while where I watched out the window and saw people being wheeled in beds from ambulances. The trauma didn't stop there as I was then wheeled into another section of the hospital that again was overflowing with people on beds in pain, screaming, I was wheeled into a section where everybody had drips 
in their hands and I start having a panic attack because I don't know what's going on and I do not want to drip because I do not need a drip. It must have been about five hours later I was finally able to see a doctor. He said something like 98% of the time this is caused by an ear infection. So he gave me medicine for an ear infection, antibiotics, painkillers. I did not feel like I was being listened to at all. I felt very confused, but I went back. I took my painkillers and it didn't go great. The painkillers actually caused pain I was not having any pain before and they caused such bad pain that I wasn't able to sleep. After a few days, I went and saw another doctor. They gave me more medicine. They told me to stop taking this medicine. It was non-stop. It just felt, I think it was maybe three weeks of back and forth with doctors in Portugal and uh, until I eventually came back to the UK. But the stress of the whole situation and the confusion of what is going on, am I being poisoned by my aircon? Is this the medicine I should be on? Am I safe to fly home? Caused so much stress that I started to get heart problems and I ended up needing beta blockers. Thankfully, it all calmed me down enough to then get myself home. I still wasn't really able to walk at this point, so I'm struggling down the corridor of my hotel every time I'm trying to leave, stumbling to my Uber, and then at the airport I need a wheelchair. When I finally made it back home, I lived with my parents until, as I mentioned before, my dad finally found that there's a type of motion sickness caused by your phone. So if any of you have experienced anything like this, or you're creeping towards hours like mine spent on your technology, please look into this and be careful. Personally, now I will try my hardest not to pass 10 hours a day on my tech. I have all my screen time connected across my devices. I'm able to see a total of all of my devices together. So I am fully aware of how many hours I'm spending online and how many hours I'm spending scrolling now. When that chapter of my life was finally over, I decided to just make sure there's nothing else going on and I decided to book a Bupa full female health check. During that health check, they test your blood, they check your breasts, and they check your cervix. To any women watching this, I highly recommend doing this as soon as possible. My bloods came back fine. My breast, not so much. We found a lump and I did suspect it because I had had pain on my breast in that area for now, it would be over a year. My cervix, I honestly thought there wasn't gonna be any issues with that. I'd never had a smear test before. I never really felt like I needed one. That was because I just didn't understand the smear test at all. And now I find it so frustrating how many people don't understand the importance of the smear test like I did. I didn't. So the breast check found a lump and I had a few more appointments following that. I got the all clear and don't need to worry about that. At the moment, I will go and get it checked again next year. But when it came to the cervix, that was a bit of an emergency. I had a severe issue with my cervix and I had to go for surgery. I basically got a cancer scare because whatever was going on down there was potentially going to develop into cancer. So I went for a large loop excision, which is basically burning the end of my cervix off. It was a very frightening experience and recovery has also been quite frightening. It's something a lot of women my age seem to be going through at the moment, but very quietly. I'm currently 29, so if you are around my age and you haven't had a smear test in the last year, please go and get one. I'm really happy to say that now I'm coming up to four weeks recovery. Next Wednesday marks four weeks, and I'm feeling pretty much back to normal. And all this time off has made me so inspired and so excited to come back. So I hope that helps clear up a few things. If you've been following me on social media, you'll see there has been mentions of operations, hospital appointments, vertigo, and just general health issues. But hopefully I'm past the worst of it now. I am waiting for one more letter from the doctors just to clear things up. But hopefully it'll be good news and I don't need any more operations anytime soon. Thanks so much for watching this and if you have any questions or suggestions on videos to do now that I'm back, please let me know in the comments down below.